of your um, accolades was um, one of the Hewitt rankings was 97% uh, of employment engagement score. But it's also the language that we use around happiness versus mm -hmm. joy mm -hmm. versus well-being. Mm -hmm. So you can experience joy in that moment. Mm -hmm. I made a difference to somebody. But to actually increase long-term your experience of life mm -hmm. and well-being, it's an ongoing thing. You know, everybody seems to be thinking, waiting for the day that they're happy. Mm -hmm. There is no day that they're going to be happy. Yeah. That's a journey. There's yeah. no destination. Mm -hmm. You're never going to be there yet. Mm -hmm. So um, really it's understanding that there are good times, there are bad times, there mm -hmm. are things that go wrong in somebody's life. Mm -hmm. But it's it's what mechanisms and how do we coach ourselves around uh, around the well-being, yeah. which will give consistent, ongoing um, results. Yeah. You know, we can all experience joy in a moment and then it's gone. Mm -hmm. you go, oh, you know, I, mean, I was happy yesterday. What happened today? <laughs> And I'm sure some of the ladies actually watching with business, yeah. they have that as the yeah. roller coaster ride of, of speeding the start up. Really up and down. <laughs> right, I've made it, it's fantastic. And then that becomes the new normal, you know. Yeah. I remember when, you know, selling 300 vouchers in a year seemed like a lot. I've sold that in, a, in an hour now, I'd be wow. <laughs> so, you know, Actually, it's, a, you know, wow. it's an hour. Yeah. So, you know. Gosh, how things have changed. Exactly. How, how did you. Um, Go at the start. You said that you invested twenty five thousand on a website, and isn't it amazing how much these charge websites <laughs> for crap websites? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, one that someone who complains your first customer. <laughs> um, what did you do to to market? Because you didn't. It sounds like you exhausted your your, your cash. Yeah. So what type of things did you actually do to get the the ball rolling? To get that proactiveness out there, so people started to recognise your brand. Well, it's interesting because the mechanisms I used in those days, I'd never use now. Mm -hmm. You know, we progress so much nowadays, we have social media. In those days, we did things, uh, we actually used affiliate marketing, which mm -hmm. I would never recommend as a mechanism now. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it doesn't still work or have a place, but it's a smaller proportion mm -hmm. of, of the sort of work you need to do to drive traffic to a website. Yes, yeah. So and we, I was one of your affiliates. Oh, were you? Yeah, for, that for, for the online business. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we still have affiliates and we love our affiliates. Mm -hmm. They're really great. But it's not how I would launch a yeah. business now. How would you recommend it now? Well, I, I think that the woman who, I mean, the woman who did, I think it's called 99 Dresses, um, but, you know, it's, it's to really create that connection mm -hmm. with people based on a particular need beforehand. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you don't even have to launch. I was thinking about, wouldn't it be interesting if... I think one of the things that I say to many women, particularly in startups, is, is their dream big enough? Mm -hmm. Like, really, is their dream big enough? And I say that Great because question. often I see that they may well choose something they're really passionate about, or they really believe in, or it happens to ha come to them at a moment in their life that they couldn't find that particular mm -hmm. goods or service. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't necessarily mean, A, it's not being done elsewhere, I'm not saying that you, know, you shouldn't go into a business to compete, of course there's plenty of disruptive innovation we can do. But also that to know your, your, your market size. Mm -hmm. So I knew that culturally we give gifts. Mm -hmm. I know the average spend of an Australian. I know that there's a billion dollars a year spent on unwanted gifts. Mm -hmm. So even if we're not educating people to give great gifts, all we've got to do is pick up the unwanted gifts and hey, we've got a really big market. So wow. I would argue the first thing is to understand is, is who is that customer? I'm a marketer, you know, this is mm -hmm. the fundamental core is who do I need to build a relationship with? The other thing is how do people communicate? How do they naturally talk to each other? Mm -hmm. And one of the things I think that Red Balloon has done very well, and I don't take the I've got a fabulous team of marketers, very clever marketer at my but they provide the tools. Mm -hmm. So we'll run competitions, which is, you know, what is, um, for our 10th anniversary, I know we ran a photo, photographic competition about red balloon, you know, where's a red balloon going to appear in photographs. Well then we had all this fabulous content. I remember that. It was yeah, so beautiful. Yeah. And the, the entries were magnificent. We had professional photographers entering, which was great promotion for them. Mm -hmm. So it's really understanding how, how being clever, mm -hmm. inspiring people, um, but what is going to get the conversation going mm -hmm. and where is the conversation yeah. taking place given the market that you're in. So let's just say if they start off and they haven't got much cash, you're saying just get out there and start building a relationship with either people, maybe strategic alliances. 
not so much affiliate. Absolutely. And who create needs something you? to create some type of conversation. Yeah, who needs you? Who are you adding value to? Where's a likely distribution channel? Mm -hmm. uh, who would you? Who would benefit from knowing you and being able to promote you? You know, this sounds really silly, but you know, I don't know how many red dresses I have. You know, there's hundreds and hundreds <laughs> and hundreds. And you know, I just used to get out there for every networking event mm -hmm. and try and put a face to the name, mm -hmm. so that people, if they came to the website, they trust and they go, oh, I met her somewhere. And then mm -hmm. of course I started the speaking. Um, and that was so I could get to a bigger audience. This was all about being mm -hmm. available to people mm -hmm. and people going, yeah, I can trust that brand because I met the woman. Yeah. And obviously it's way bigger now than me, but our, and our corporate team, they all still go to networking events. We go mm -hmm. to trade shows. We'd be seen. Okay. Um, and the whole big thing was just to be memorable. Mm -hmm. It just was a brand association. Mm -hmm. uh, you've had 12 years experience now, or over 12, obviously, because you're in the corporate industry as well. Um, corporate background, sorry, I should say. You now write business blogs, and your business blog is in the top five of Australia. Yeah. That's an awesome achievement. And I went on there today and I had a look at it and I thought, you have awesome stuff. So the business blog is naomisimpson.com. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. So tell us about that. Um, the, um, look, I didn't start blogging for any, for any, promotional reason at all. Mm -hmm. I started blogging because you can see all of those books over there. There must be 200 mm -hmm. books there. I've read all of them. Uh, except maybe that the four. <laughs> so, but, I, you know, I've read and I can't remember them. So I need to write a review about them. So mm -hmm. I, write, I, it, I am a collector of information mm -hmm. and I need to put that somewhere so I can find it. I use my own blog, the search function, every other day. I know I know that. Let me just look. Oh, see, I knew, wow. I knew that. It's really scary sometimes I go and see a speaker and I go, gee, that sounds familiar. Mm -hmm. I do a search, oh, I've read their book. How interesting. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so I don't often make it. So it's, it's the, you know, my blog is my inside of my brain. That's a scary thing, isn't it? And I share that openly with anybody else because, you know, either they can read a summary or my view or how does it apply and mm -hmm. that may save set people some time. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that I read a book in 2005, I think, or six. I don't know, it's a long time ago. It's out of print. And, um... That was about the startup phase, mm -hmm. and what I've done now is people who subscribe to the blog they can download that and they can have it for free. You know, I covered the cost of the production of it, and you know, it's not the greatest. But in fact, I, I was I was asked to produce an audio book, and I started reading, and I go, Jesus, I, I wouldn't do that now. Oh, I wouldn't do that now. Oh. So you know, it's ancient history. I'm sure there's still some Isn't value that in there. When you but start to look so like oh, oh, I'll change that now. Oh, no. <laughs> So, um, so people can download it and yeah. you know, it's fine. And there, you've actually been asked to be part of a LinkedIn program um, and apparently it's only two Australians have been asked but they've got Deepak Chopra, you've got Richard Branson and you're actually with these guys and you're actually giving content. So tell me more about that. Yeah, that I've written, you. I don't know, probably like, but mate, I must be up to at least 30 blog posts and I have 110,000 followers on LinkedIn. And they sent me a little trophy to say I'm one of the most looked at people on LinkedIn, which is very funny. I didn't win a trophy for anything at school. <laughs> I never won anything. So and I'm sure won that's not on your list. 37 awards? No, and that makes 38 now. <laughs> very funny. So, um, yeah, I've been writing for them. And it's interesting, the, the things that I'm finding working really well on LinkedIn are far more life lessons than business lessons. Mm -hmm. You know, so what are the two elements of success? Um, or three things young women should think about when they're starting their careers. Mm -hmm. I wrote nine things every woman should tell her son. Mm -hmm. That was pretty popular. I must admit, I've had 270,000 people read my blog on wow. 10 things bosses hate. Oh, isn't that amazing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is, it is quite funny. Gosh. Um, you know, and some blog posts literally have that many people looking at them, mm -hmm. others in 100,000 or 15,000 or whatever, but mm -hmm. yeah, I have uh, 110,000 followers. So that's that's interesting to be named a thought leader. You know, I thought mm -hmm. I was kind of just muddling through. Um, I, I suspect that because I have been doing this for 12 years, I didn't, you know, I, I really didn't know. I just took to those books and tried to learn as much as I possibly could because mm -hmm. I didn't know the way forward. I didn't know how to do it. And we got some things right and we got some things yeah. totally wrong. So uh, now after consuming all of that information, I guess I've 
kind of, you know, yeah. something to share. And isn't part of your growth, wouldn't you agree, is from all, like if everything was perfect, how would you actually learn? Oh, that's right. Like I know that when my very first business, it was it was my university of not what to do. Yeah. And that's how I became very good at what to do. I remember a mentor saying to me, he goes, it might have been expensive, so it better be a good lesson, you know. <laughs> The more expensive it is, the better lesson it needs to be. So what would be your advice then for people in startup that, um, you actually mentioned before, just if you're going to do it, make sure you're, you're passionate about it, you're really passionate about it, you, you're there 100%, you've got that loyalty, you just you you want to kick some major goals. Yeah, you can't fake it till you make it. You yeah. either love it or you don't. Yeah. And if you're tired, like if you're really tired, a good hard look at yourself because it's really hard to inspire mm -hmm. people around you if you're bored mm -hmm. or you're sick of it or you thought it was a good idea at the time but you're a bit over it. Yeah. So there's four things that I say really to start up.